what better opportunity to, you know, watch something and learn a different skill or just see something that's interesting. You know, you never know what you'll watch that will spark some sort of interest that maybe you can do this from your house in Oklahoma or wherever you live. You know what I mean? Um, that's what, that's what, you know, us at Georgia Bushcraft, we're, we want to share knowledge and, and help our community and Nick and Dustin from Wazoo. They're just two awesome humans who like to do the exact same thing too. So, um, whatever we can do to help, we're here. They're wonderful, awesome creatures. They're super docile, um, and they're a ton of fun, especially if you have kids or you like, you know, delicious farm fresh eggs. Uh, that was our, that was kind of our main reason for getting chickens. It's, uh, um, I don't know, it's awesome to be able to walk out here and there's probably someone here right now and there's a chicken in there. Let's, let's just grab some eggs so I can show you why I love keeping chickens. Here's a little breakdown too of what we're gonna do today. Um, we got about an hour's worth of, of stuff to talk about, but um, I'm gonna give you guys a tour of our backyard, our backyard setup. Uh, I'm gonna show you our chickens. I'm gonna talk about the different breeds of chickens we have, you know, our story, you know, where we all started from. Uh, and then we're gonna go down the line and show you everybody and then start answering questions and, uh, um, you know, see if we can go in depth into more questions you guys may have. So turn the screen around here. Um, and there went that chicken. Why is it? Yeah, I need my stand. All right, here we go. So right there, we've already gotten our eggs for today, this morning, but these are, you know, the past couple hours or so. But uh, you can see they're different colors. They're super fresh and nice and warm. Um, so yeah, there's six eggs here. We usually get, you know, one, almost one egg a day from our chickens. That's, that's during the good months. When it's really cold or really hot, they're less inclined to, to lay eggs every day. Um, but uh, most of the year in Georgia, I mean, it's good la egg laying season. So and for the first few years of a chicken's life, you'll get eggs pretty regularly. Um, so, so let's start with uh, where, where we got them. I'll close that up there. Uh, where we got them, how we got them, and, uh, and all that. So usually when you get chickens, um, you get them and they look like this. These little, little girls here. Um, well, these are turkeys. Well, let me turn you around here. Hold on. Looks like a turkey to me. You're a turkey. <laughs> those are turkeys, but those are chickens, little baby chickens. Um, they're, these are the latest ones we, we got. We picked these up from uh, a local, feed and seed store here in Watkinsville. Uh, well, these were just kind of extra ones that we wanted to add to the flock because recently, I'm sure you guys may know this, but it's becoming kind of difficult to get chickens because everybody's, everybody wants chickens now because it's kind of hard to find eggs in certain places. Um, and these here are the two turkeys. So they had these turkeys there as well. And I've never kept turkeys before. So we're gonna see what happens with it. Our neighbor has one. Uh, and it's kind of like the protector of the uh, of their flock. So gigantic, mean bird. I don't know. Hey Casey, I got a question from Jordan as to what yeah. kind of chickens those are. So some of these are kind of questionable. I know the the older ones we have. So when we got these, it was kind of whatever they had. Um, I believe the black ones here are barb rocks. Uh, or Plymouth Rock chickens. And I believe the yellow ones there are um, uh, like Rhode Island Reds. Those are kind of standard egg laying, good egg laying chickens. Uh, but when they're this age, it's, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell exactly what they are. So these guys are only, we got them in the beginning of April. So they're only about three or four weeks old, maybe, maybe a little over a month. Um, so next we're gonna go over to this, this coop here. Um, these guys here we got in the early part of March, and you can see they're a pretty sizable difference. Um, and the reason they are, you know, contained within their own areas is because the big ones over there, they're kind of jerks to the little ones. They'll peck at them, and sometimes they'll even kill them. Um, 
you know, because they're not their babies and pecking or chicken, ugh, chickens can be, can be a holes. Um, but these guys, we got them from uh, Tractor Supply. They actually, they're only like $2 a chicken. And, uh, and so when you get chickens too, this, this is kind of a question a lot of people have, how long will it take for me to get eggs? You know, I, I, obviously these little guys aren't gonna be making eggs anytime soon. So usually it takes, you know, six to eight months in there uh, at the most. I think the first set we got, um, it was like 12 weeks or something. It wasn't, it was pretty quick, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyways, it, it takes a little while. It, it takes several months, um, but it's worth it because then you get multiple years of, of chicken uh, eggs. So, so we have 12 of these inside of here, 13 of these. We had 14. Um, kind of the rule of thumb I've always heard is whenever you buy chickens, especially from tractor supply in the little chick form, you're gonna lose like 10% of them. They just, they die for whatever reasons. I mean, they're, they're bred in uh, huge quantities and it's just, it is what it is. Um, in my experience, we haven't lost that many. And so I always buy extra and I am stuck with a ton of chickens. So, I mean, it, it's worth it because at one point in time when we had a whole bunch, I mean, we were getting 20 eggs or so a day. Um, and when it's scarce to find farm fresh eggs, it's, it's nice. So, but, uh, but yeah, the, there's a different, there's a whole mix of breeds in here. I have no idea really what a lot of these are because the tractor supply, it was kind of a cluster there. Everything was mismarked. Nobody there knew anything. Um, I'm kind of excited. Some of these, if you can see their feet have feathers on it. And so that's a different altogether uh, breed of chicken than we've ever had. So some are coming over here. You see, look at his feet. So he's got shoes on, little socks. Um, and I don't know exactly what those are called. There's actually multiple breeds that have uh, feathers on their feet, but I'm no chicken expert. We just keep them in our backyard and love eggs. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so this is our little coop here. Um, typically when you get chickens, the, uh, the suggested size for um, a coop and a run usually is two to four square feet per chicken. Um, and I think it's maybe five to 10 square feet for the run when they're little babies. Um, but this one has worked pretty good. I think it's a uh, four or five foot by five foot uh, in this area here. And so I'll open it up, I'll show you. Um, so they'll go and they'll, they'll lay their little eggs in there. We've got a, uh, a warming heat or a light heat light, um, which if it gets below 40 degrees, you don't have to, but we like our chickens and we don't like them to freeze. So, but a lot of people open that back up and just kind of talk about some of the, the basic yeah. fundamentals of a chicken coop. Like what are you yeah. looking for? Why is it raised off the ground? What else is in here? Absolutely. So, one chickens are really gross so uh and they kind of stink when it's hot out so you want to have as much bedding and try to swap it out you know as much as possible i just buy the little cedar shavings from tractor supply it's maybe six dollars for a bag uh, i used to throw in there it's it's pretty pretty easy and you have their food um and i'll get to their food in a little bit and water obviously check those every day um you want a place for them that kind of get up off the ground and and um uh, kind of roost on and so and then you'll have a little little boxes here for them to go lay in I mean maybe a foot by a foot for a uh, for them to lay the eggs in, in each individual area they share all the spots um, and but the more and more we keep chickens the more I realize that they're not picky they don't really care um, so this was their original house here we bought this from tractor supply it's like 200 something dollars I don't really recommend it because you can see what it looks like after two years of being outside. It's made of thin wood and it just falls apart. It's a good way to start, but I mean, I built this one out of all materials that were left around from when we built our house. I mean, it's an old window and old, you know, tin and stuff like that. So you can do, make, you know, make use of pallets really, really easily, old fencing, stuff like that. If you can avoid spending the money on it, that's what I suggest. Um, but yeah, so, so back to this, this like decrepit shack over here. 
I built them this like nice big old area. This was this was before. Um, hey, Ma. Um, I built this before we had these chickens here. I had it with our larger chickens over here, and uh, they didn't want to go in here. <laughs> they they were born in here and everything, but when we put them in this big enclosure here, they all prefer this. They cram all of themselves into this one little place <laughs> and totally avoided that. So they don't care. They're not picky. Well, as long as they have a spot that's kind of comfy to lay eggs and hang out at night that's safe, that's where they would prefer to go. Um, so, so yeah, so this is, this is kind of our enclosure here and, and I'll talk about that here really quick. So this is a, a 20 by 40, I think is about the size of this area here. Um, and it's all right for, for them to kind of be kept in the one same one spot. If you don't want to free range them around your yard, we have a garden that's, that's pretty easily accessible to them. Um, one thing with keeping chickens free range, they poop on everything. If you have mulch in anything, they will go and tear apart all of your mulch. You know, if you have flowers or plants that you bought and put in flower plants, they'll eat them and peck at them. So do you learn this from like, experience? Yes. <laughs> that is why they are all in here now because we were so sick of them because we had, we had this and this standalone without any cage around it over here. Okay. And they were everywhere in our yard and destroyed it. And it was annoying. We we're stepping on chicken poop barefoot all the time. So we moved them over here, here and built this. And then we recently uh, got goats. And so we added on to it, uh, probably doubling almost two more of these this way. So they have now have all of this area to graze and hang out in. And then really the goats are super happy to be in here with them. There's our two goats there, Larry and Terry. They're crazy. Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of the, the simple shelter thing. There's another, another thing people like to use, it's called a chicken tractor. If, if you've never heard of that, check that out. It's imagine a, um, a pyramid type shape with two wheels okay and they live and are contained within this you know triangle shape um and as they poop and peck at your yard they eat all the grass and all the stuff that's around it and destroy it so you just move it around your yard but as it's gone and away from there and the chickens aren't pecking and scratching at that um the grass grows back really well uh if you could see that dark green patch of grass right there that was mostly mud when they were done with it there was nothing left like scorched earth so it is really good for your grass and for your garden their uh their litter and then one soon to become fertilizer but um so yeah so so let's talk food i really didn't know to begin with you know what chickens ate you know what, what do i feed these things and and so what we like to use in the beginning they they sell this stuff it's a uh it's it's corn pellets. It's basically broken up corn. Um, it's called chick starter. This is the this is the the goods. I also call it chicken crack because the big chickens. Look at them all coming over here. <laughs> it's like uh, catnip for chickens um, because it's super easy to eat. It has way more protein in it. Okay, twenty four percent protein. Um, and and it's great for the babies now turkeys okay they require something with a little bit more protein um and i got this stuff right down here uh i think it's actually the one below it but uh that has a little bit more protein in it and they're just they're bigger birds and that's what they require um but a 50 pound bag for you know 12 chickens we've had them for a uh over a month and I'm not even halfway through this bag. So, and that bag is $16. So feed for chickens, for baby chickens isn't, it doesn't really cost that much. Now the bigger chickens, they have uh, pellets. So it's the same thing. I think it's 13 or 14, get out of your goats. I'll show you exactly what they eat. Um, and this is also about the same price. Here it is. Yeah, so 16% uh, layer feed pellets. and. They like it. It's easy, easy for them to eat. The goats like it. Um, and again, it's not that expensive, but I'll go through a bag and a half a month at least 
with a bag of chickens with 12 of them. So you'll start spending that, uh, spending money pretty quick when they get bigger. But uh, so as far as feeders go, so when, when you get your baby chicks, if you do, you want to get a little, a little guy like this. Um, it's good for about that, their size, but as they get to be bigger like that, um, you definitely want to have a large one or you're filling it up all the time. So, and I usually like to hang these things, but we just recently put these guys in here um, just to separate them from the large, the medium sized ones. And they are nasty and they get all of their, like they kick their stuff all in their water. So every day you have to literally just grab the, uh oh, hold on. Lost the video here. Bear with me. Boop. Okay. So it's basically kind of like, I mean, yank it out of there. And also, chickens definitely have salmonella. <laughs> and you always want to wash your hands and everything. <laughs> and having little little children, um, making sure that they, they wash their hands too. I mean, they're, they're livestock, you know? So definitely, definitely use some sanitation. Not like what I'm doing right now. But um, so, so smaller babies, like a, a little bit smaller food uh, container. Larger one, obviously next step up. And then this is something that I built uh, just out of the convenience of not having to feed the bigger ones all the time. And I just use some three inch PVC pipe. And uh, so it goes up into here and you come around this side. It's like a ghetto, but um, basically you just undo those, fills it up, it keeps it dry for the most part. And your feed's right there. So I fill this up maybe every three or four days. And it, and it works good and it's pretty cheap. It's maybe $30, $40 worth of material, which is 20 something dollars worth for one of those other metal feeders. So it was just something that I like to, I like to, to do. We also go out of town a lot and we're gone for a day or two sometimes. And we fill that up, make sure that we have an automated water little guy here too, and uh, plug that up and it's, they're good to go. They're, they're pretty easy. So on that same line of thought, Casey, if you're yep. leaving town, uh, what happens with the eggs? Do they just start piling up while you're out? Yeah, yeah, usually you'll come back and there'll be like 30 eggs. We have neighbors who love eggs, so we just tell them to come over and get them. Um, so we'll just uh, say, hey, we'll be back whenever, you know, if you want to mind, just making sure the chickens don't die and, you know, go get as many eggs as you want. So whatever, whatever comes out is yours kind of thing. Um, but Chicken eggs too, they will last a long time uncleaned, just like this. Um, once you wash it, you wash it off what they call the bloom, or it's like a protective layer that's on the egg. So once you do that, they have to go in the fridge and then they're good for, I don't know, like three to five weeks, somewhere in that range. So typically what we'll do is until we're ready to either sell them or to actually eat them, you know, getting, getting low in the fridge, um, then we'll wash them. But normally the, we have a basket that they go in. We'll come out here with that. And uh, they're just sit, sitting out on the deck and they're fine. And they, they can last a long time. And I believe too, you can, um, I think it's like mineral spirits. There, there's something that you can, you can put on the outside, rub on the outside of them. And then they'll last for years, they'll last for a long time. These damn goats, look at this. These things are the most ridiculous creatures on the planet. They are scavengers. Get out of here. Pig and crack. And goat crack. But I'll go clean that up. Anyways, so let's talk now really quick. Uh, well, before I skip on to the next, next one, do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions so far on uh, what we've discussed? Can I chime in on that? Yes. Yeah. On, your, on your egg uh, aging? Mm-hmm. So I have not found this to be a hundred percent all the time, but it works yeah. most of the time. Have you ever sank an egg to test it mm -hmm. in water? I've never actually done that. I've seen, I've seen some like uh, little information things on the website or on Facebook. Um, if it sinks, it's, I forget if it's good, if it sinks and it's not good, if it floats or the opposite. I don't know. I don't know. I've never done it. Yeah. It's basically um, kind of a dial. If you, if mm -hmm. your egg should sink, but you'll notice it as it starts aging, and I think it's releasing some gases yeah. because it's going rancid. You'll see at the, in various stages of going rancid, 
the eggs will begin to float. And so if they're upright, they're getting there. They should still be edible. Yeah. And, but that's when you start getting in that cautionary period. So that's kind of what my family's always used to gauge. That's if the a good egg point. That's well, a good I've point. I've also heard, and I don't know, uh, maybe somebody else has better information on this. It has chickens and eggs, but I've heard the older eggs that when they start to float or whatever, actually make better hard boiled eggs. Really? It releases the shell easier or something. We also have uh, Jordan chimed in and he said it's mineral oil. That's mineral it. oil, okay. Yeah. So if you have to wash it, coat it in mineral oil to let it sit. Um, that's interesting. I've thought about doing uh, like pickling eggs. I don't know if I would ever actually eat a pickled egg in real life, but <laughs> if we ever get to a point, I mean, we're about to have 29 laying chickens, assuming nothing kills them. Um, <coughs> so in theory, that's 25 the 29 eggs a day um unless people start really buying our chicken eggs we're gonna have to do something with them so well, let's talk about that so so you got farm fresh eggs they're gonna be healthier better probably than what you can get mass produced in the store so oh. if people wanted to go out locally and try and find some farm fresh eggs rather than raising their own chickens uh what sort of prices would they expect to pay for something like that? typically we charge four dollars a dozen um, and that helps us cover the cost of the feed, cover the cost of the, the cartons. I mean, the cartons are put maybe 30 cents or so a piece, but um, typically $4 it, it is a good price. Uh, $3 if you're at a farmer's price. market, you know. Uh, maybe we're charging too, less, uh, too, too low, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, for a while, I mean, before all of the craziness uh, started, you know, with, with the coronavirus and all that, um, it was kind of hard to sell eggs. I mean, Jessica would ask her friends at work and things like that. And we had a couple of people that would buy them, but for a while we had a lot of eggs. And, uh, and so now recently, I mean, we just had somebody come over today and buy three, three things of eggs, um, which now we're down to like a dozen eggs and what you see in there. Um, it was funny. I was at the grocery store, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago and I had to stop and take a photo of the actual like eggshell or the shelves uh, where the eggs normally are sold. And it was actually out of eggs. And I'd heard people say that, but that was the first time I'd actually ever seen it. So it makes sense why more people are, have been contacting us and, and wanting to buy them. Well, but, if you're curious, here in Houston, Texas, the going rate at a farmer's market is anywhere 7 to $12 for a dozen. Of like regular eggs? No, those those are like local farmers market. Oh yeah, farmer farmer style eggs. Like our eggs. Wow. Yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's well, pretty... we also live in the country, and there's a lot of people that have chickens out here too, uh, and a lot of people that sell them um, locally too. So, but I guess in a larger like metropolitan area, it may be a little bit harder to find um, sources for for farm eggs. Mm -hmm. or farm fresh eggs but they are totally better i mean they really are i'm not just saying that i don't think that's just you know just a joke but um that and you know what's in them you know what i mean i i know what they eat oh, freaking goats over there uh i know what they eat um and i know that there's no there's no hormones outside of maybe when they were you know birthed but um or bred but uh now they're they're all all natural chickens. Um, and I was going to say, too, uh, I don't know what. I'm about to attack those goats back there. Golly. Um, any other questions? Any other thoughts on the beginning stages of chickens? Next, uh, next Jordan one, says that he's, he's done pickled eggs, but he can't keep them in the house because the kids are tearing them up. <laughs> Man, I, I guess I got to find a really good recipe on uh, – I have not ever been impressed with any pickled eggs that I've had because they're usually in beet juice, right? They're like the purpley colored, and that's just that pickled beets taste like dirt to me. So that sounds terrible. I don't know. I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to experiment with it here soon, but I we'll see. We'll we'll see. But um, well, cool. I want to talk really quick too about our uh, adult chickens here and and the different breeds that we have. Um, so I'm going to turn the screen around here. Do, do, do. And so we'll start with, with this girl here. Um, so we have not named any of these 11 
chickens, the larger adults. We have 12. There's only one we've named that she's over there, and that's Pecky. That's one of the original ones that have survived the great killings. But, uh, <laughs> but th this one, this is called an Americana. Um, they lay the little tiny greenish blue eggs. Um, they're, they're a little bit smaller birds. I don't really know their eating pattern. I, don't, I assume they don't consume as much, but, uh, but they're good little birds or they're, they're quiet. They don't really, ours don't really get into much. Can you get they, a little closer? It's kind of hard to see from, from that far out. It's a little blurry. Their, uh, their feathers are really pretty on there. They're really nice chickens. Um, but they're a little more timid. Cool. And so there's another one right there. And then, so the next one, uh, they're one of our better uh, layers. So this one is a, a, a Rhode Island red. So we have more of these. Um, they, they lay pretty well. They're good meat chickens too, I believe. Um, we don't intend on eating any of our chickens unless we have to kind of thing. They're kind of like the step before the dogs if we have to eat anything, <laughs> you know? But uh, what do they say about, you know, best way to store food is keep it alive so you're ready. But, um, but these, these are good chickens. They, they lay eggs pretty regularly and pretty, pretty large. This one right here is a uh, white leghorn. These things are a-holes. Uh, they're really, really timid, and they do not like to be held. At least ours don't. They're hard to catch. They're like the the hardest ones. The boss in the in the video game. They're the hardest ones to get. So when they get away, I just let them go. Um, and so let's see here. And we have some other ones. So, so this one, re what's the reason for having those harder to get ones? The, the, so they, they lay the nice big white eggs. Okay. Um, and so they, that adds a kind of diverse diversity to our cartons of eggs, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. It, it was our first experience ever having those. I don't know if I'd ever get them again. I mean, they're okay for, for what they are. Um, so this one is a uh, black Asian chicken. Uh, they, they lay, you know, nice big brown eggs as well. Um, they're, they're really good egg layers. They're a lot bigger than a lot of the other chickens really cool colors if you guys are uh interesting interested in seeing like the coolest chicken ever look up an indonesian black chicken the entire chicken is black mm. the beak everything it's like a uh, murdered out chicken and they're i guess they're really expensive and really hard to find um i've never seen one in real life but i've seen them online but this is a black asian chicken so we have two of those all righty and so this one over here, this one's our favorite chicken. So chickens are kind of like dogs where they do recognize people. Um, you can call them and if you have a nice friendly one, they'll listen. Pecky, come here, Pecky. Oh, she's taking a dirt bath right now. Well, all right, so I Googled, I Googled the Indonesian black chicken and there's pictures that are hard to believe. It's the it coolest even thing. after you pluck them, that they're like black skinned. Yeah, they're completely black. It's the weirdest thing. So they go for yeah, like, if you go to cook up chicken legs or chicken wings, they're gonna come out black. <laughs> oh my weird. gosh. So chickens, uh, I'm gonna turn my camera around here. Chickens don't, uh, you don't, they don't really like water. They don't like baths, even though they can be kind of stinky. So I'm trying to turn my camera around while holding the chicken there we go all right so this is pecky you may have seen pecky in a lot of other videos and photos uh she's one of our original chickens um she's the oldest i don't really know if she's still laying or not but we hadn't decided to send her to uh uh to the end of her days i don't know if we ever will they're just they're, she's been good but she's sweet and so you can hear her voice how she's like having issues breathing See how she's like gasping for air? She was attacked by, um, well, we don't really know. It's either a, a coyote or a possum or a raccoon. Um, so the rest of her cohorts were all murdered, uh, including Cluck Norris, one of our other favorite chickens. Um, but Pecky survived. She was under the deck for like two days 
like with no water or anything. It was really hot and miserable. And so it, it had attacked her neck. So a lot of the, a lot of the way chickens are how they're killed really dictates what animal killed them. So, you know, if they're just completely gone and missing, it was probably a coyote or a dog um, just because it ate the entire thing or took it somewhere far away. Um, hawks will generally, they'll, they'll swoop down out of the air and break its neck um, and peck it to death or whatever uh, in, in the coop there. Uh, possums sometimes will eat them from the back forward because uh, they're disgusting creatures. Uh, <laughs> Um, or they'll just, they'll eat their heads off. And that's what happened to the latest uh, attack. But, um, but you could tell, I mean, chickens, chickens are wonderful pets. They're wonderful animals. They're great for kids. Um, I mean, there's, there's just so many really good things about chickens. So if you can have them in your, in your yard, in your neighborhood, I mean, it, they're, the cost to get into keeping chickens is really low. And if you eat eggs every day, like we do, it's worth it, you know? And it's good for our children. We have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. And our four-year-old, Emma, she loves going and, and getting the eggs. And, and it's, it's nice to be able to teach her young, you know, about animal husbandry and how to, you know, care for something other than a dog or a cat or a hamster. Um, you know, it's just a neat story for them to grow up and learn, you know, learn how to do. But, uh, I mean, it's just bird just sits here hangs out we can pin you back on the uh, ipad here if you want to yeah okay i'm gonna i'll turn the speed well i'll turn this one. uh yeah switch can you spotlight me to the ipad you're on it okay cool hmm. oh let me get out of the i'm just gonna put this down here Aim on the ipad. but um but yeah so they're they're fantastic animals they're they're easy to take care of um typically at nighttime if you do let them free range they'll go and they will uh let me make this a little bit oh wait can you hear me oh hold on hold on yeah what? Hmm. sorry Matt, Matt. <laughs> All right, hear me now? All right, good there to go. go. All, right. All right, sweet. Um, so yeah, so if, if you free range chickens in your backyard, I mean, they're, they're actually pretty intelligent. They'll know to go, to go home when it gets to be dark. I mean, they're, they are terrified because everything eats them. So they'll just wander on back to their house, but they, they do better free range because there's more available food sources. They love to pick little grubs and bugs, lizards, small frogs, stuff like that. Um, so I saw a question come through. You guys I think, see that? Uh, well, one of the things here was about an incubator. And I think you mentioned you get all of yours as chicks, but do you have any plans to incubate eggs? And yeah, them? so so next year is, I think, going to be our first year of trying to actually get a rooster and um, and start, you know, creating our own chickens. Um, I don't really, I don't know. We're, we'll have 29, and so it depends on how, how far down the road we want to get. And I don't know if I want a male a rooster because <laughs> they're, they're loud and aggressive, and I think you have to kind of keep them in their own area. Um, chickens will get, will get broody, so what that means is they'll want to lay eggs and have babies, and so they'll go and they'll sit on everybody else's eggs and take up all the room, and they're just – they're annoying when they're that way. And so I believe when you have a male, that happens more. And so maybe egg production will go down for a little. I don't know. I have to look into it and see. I'm not opposed to it, but I'd like to at least try it just to, to see if it's something we want to continue to do. Um, but And I know you mentioned the, the bathing a little bit, that they don't like being bathed. But do you have to bathe them? No. Um, nope. They're, they're good to go. They bathe themselves in, in – uh, in dirt they take dirt baths so if you can't well, i can't really see but just covered in dirt and so are my pants but um they love to roll around in, in sand and, and anything dusty um that's how that's how they kind of get get clean um probably another question we'll get to 
So do chickens fly? And they do fly. And just like that, all over my face. Um, but yeah, they do fly. So you have to, if you want to keep them contained in here, you have to trim their wings. And so um, let me see if I can. Okay. So, and it's really easy. It kind of made us nervous to begin with. But you, so Pecky, we trimmed her wings a long time ago. Um, but she's the only one that can fly right now. So she, every day she flies out in the morning and pecks around, and does her thing, and then she goes home. Um, but we like her, and she doesn't really make a mess, so, so she's good to go. But what you do is you basically you find the flight wings, and you just grab a pair of scissors um, and cut, just trim them up a little bit lower. I mean, a few inches or so, a couple inches, and then they can't fly. But with that, you're also taking away one of their – um, abilities to protect themselves and escape a predator. So it's like decline a cat. You know, if it's an indoor cat, that's fine. If it's an outdoor cat, you may not want to. Um, but I don't need all of our chickens flying everywhere. So we'll just hope nothing gets in there. But uh, I got, a, got a question from one Mark Merriweather Vorderbergen of how much do you spend on store bought feed per chicken? For chicken, so you have to help me math this up. So if I let's just say I get two bags at fifteen to thirty dollars a month and and hundred pounds worth of chicken feed. Um, that's for how many chickens? Uh, that's for that. Let's just say fifteen chickens. That was give or take. Cause we had three more. We had fifteen not that long ago, and then they were murdered. Uh, so hundred dollars uh, a month. Wait, hundred dollars a month. Is that we said for 15 chickens? Oh, $30 pounds. a month. Yeah. So, I mean, $5 many or dollars? so. It's not. 15 adults. No, how many dollars so, per bag? $30 or $15 a bag. Okay. So, oh, okay. Pounds a bag. Yeah. So, dollars. So $2 per chicken inch. Yeah. You know, so it, it's not a lot. And that's, and then we also save all of our scraps. So, we have, I'm surprised there's not one out here. We usually have the, we have these big bowls um, that we keep in our kitchen. And so after dinner, any sort of, any sort of scraps. I mean, they eat pretty much anything other than chicken and chocolate and a handful of other things. Um, really, they like bread. Any sort of like Cheerio or um, things like that, they have always just really flock more towards that. Other chickens we've had in the past, what we would do is we get like a, a head of lettuce um, and you could like tie it onto a string or something and hang it in there. And it's, it's a fun toy for them. They like them. These don't seem to like vegetables. I don't know if they're just being picked. Goats are, your goats are going to town and your chicken feeder in there. Oh yeah, they, they eat from there. Even though I have a nice huge thing over here in their little pen full of the same food, but. Cool. Um, can we talk about some uh, upkeep and maintenance? Like what, what sort of cleaning and cleaning out pens and stuff like that do you have to do and how often? So really I only clean it out maybe every month or so just to take, um, take their litter and put it in a pile for a compost pile um, just for the futures for our garden. Uh, and it's simple as I just go in there and I rake, rake out this stuff. So what, what I've recently been doing to put down in here, the past year we had so much rain, it's been like a swamp. And so now every time I cut the grass, I drop the, drop the grass in there and they love to peck through it. Um, we'll get like bundles of hay or rolls of hay and we'll put hay out in there and then they pick through that and it, and it slowly, you know, breaks down. And over time, I mean, you have fantastic fertilizer and a fantastic soil. Um, and so, yeah, at least once a month, I'll, I'll scrape some, like, the top layers out and just, you know, throw some new stuff down in there. But they go through it so quick. They mix it all up constantly. They're, all like, with their little little feet, little talons, and their beak, they just go and they peck at everything all day. And they, they stir it all up. Um, but, uh, but outside of that, upkeep-wise, I mean, you have to – their, their water containers – they get to be really disgusting. So usually I have to change them every day or every other day. And usually, you know, you want to wash them out pretty regularly or they, they get really full of algae and chicken poop and all sorts of other things. 
So they're again they're, water uh, water feeder behind you there. That's yep. on the tripod. Yeah, over there. I assume that one stays a little cleaner being up off the ground. It does, uh, but the stupid goats go and they knock it over now every day. So I'm gonna have to figure out something <laughs> different. These goats, man, I love them, but they're like children. They they lit out the pecking. Hey, um, uh, Darren is saying that his chickens keep the ticks down, which is a big plus. So mm -hmm. yeah, you oh yeah, get like hundreds of them and just let them go on the property there. I know, right? <laughs> that's our that's next uh, the next phase. The, the tick killing phase, just let them loose, you know, a week before the gathering. That'd be um, a good, good uh, you know, hunt, hunt exercise too during Georgia bushcraft. You go out and hunt a chicken. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a good processing class. So we've never done a chicken before. We've done rabbit and other animals. Um, but th that's one other thing too. So we, like I said, I don't really want to have to kill these chickens, you know, unless they start not producing eggs. Um, but they've really become kind of part of the family. They've worked for years or will work for years giving us eggs every day. So kind of giving them a retirement plan isn't that big a deal. But if we got a ton of them, they're not doing anything. Um, but we did have one during the last uh, mass killing when the possum got in there. Um, there, is, there is one chicken that's around here somewhere. Uh, she still has wounds that are from, from that. And we, we've tried to treat it. And, and she's been getting better, but there was a time where we kind of felt bad that, you know, maybe it was in her best interest that, you know, we put her down. I'm kind of glad we didn't because she's fine pretty much now. But um, so we were ready to, to process her. And, uh, and so I started looking into that. I've never done that before. Um, I think it's about as simple as really just putting them in hot water, boiling to some extent uh, water and to help, you know, get all the feathers off and, and, uh, help get the feathers removed easier and then basically just start processing from from that point on but uh i think in some point in the future we'll, we'll definitely do a class or or be careful with that online too PETA. people <laughs> like get all mad um darren, darren we, recommends if you paint your water containers black it helps keep the algae down oh uh, okay that makes sense um that's why i've got like black barrels over there those those are specifically for you. You don't get as much algae. So that makes sense. I haven't really thought about that. And then we got um, a question that came in uh, about snakes. Somebody had snakes that often would find their way into the eggs. Have you had any issues with that? I've never had any snakes. Yeah, usually like black black snakes, king snakes, things like that will go in and, and then they'll eat the eggs. I've never noticed our eggs disappearing. Uh, I keep a pretty good track on, on the volume that we're getting. Um, I would assume we have a lot of snakes out here too. I mean, we find a whole bunch of a base camp up in the barns, but uh, surprisingly, I've never seen a snake. That doesn't mean they're not there, but they haven't gone to town on all my eggs yet. Maybe I just hadn't found them yet. So, especially with that big, the the gigantic one. Were you guys here at uh, the last gathering when the that six or seven foot long black? Uh, king snake or black race or whatever it was uh was up by the big barn and it, it just literally went right between uh, my legs while we were all standing there watching it i don't know if it was a bad omen or what but yeah and you had the baby pterodactyls in your barn there too i don't know uh, if the same event the Vulture barn yeah they've been they've been eradicated from that barn i didn't kill them that's against the law but they're no longer there so <laughs> evicted <laughs> they they have been evicted um yeah, but no, no snakes, not yet. All right, I think that's all the questions I see here. Nope. Unless anybody else has any other questions for Casey, right off. And wait a minute and schmooze and. I'm trying to think ask of what questions else. you got. Um, really, the best best resource that I found for for taking care of chickens has been Tractor Supply, for for all of the the gear and all the different things you need from it, or a local feed and seed store. But they're really easy. I mean, if you, keep a, if you have a dog or a cat, it's about the same, except for they don't produce tasty, delicious breakfast. What if I have neighbors that live close to me? How much noise do the hens make? The hens really don't make any noise. I mean, here and there, they'll, I mean, since this whole video, I don't think you guys have heard them really say much. It's the males you really have to worry about. Um, when we lived in Atlanta, we lived in right outside Metro Atlanta, 
and we had four chickens in our backyard and nobody ever knew it. We weren't supposed to because we, I think a lot of the ordinances, if you're within city limits, is if you don't have at least two acres, you can't keep chickens. I think it's typically the case, um, but we definitely didn't have an acre and we had four chickens. No one ever said anything. We had them for years um, until they died, until they were killed. But, um, but, and it also depends on the breed too. Certain breeds are definitely louder. You know, one, I don't, there are certain chickens in here. I don't think I've ever heard say anything. But usually when they do, it's like if they're fighting or when they're laying an egg. And usually there's a, an interesting squawk or two associated when the egg leaves the body, <laughs> which I don't blame them, but, um, but they're, they're wonderful animals. They're really, they're really kind. They're not that expensive to take care of. Um, and even if you got two to four of them, it would be more than enough to, to start with. I mean, getting four eggs a day, it's kind of average of what, you know, two adults may eat. I don't know. I eat like four a day, so I may have high cholesterol now, but, uh, <laughs> better check check that um but they're good they're they're fun interesting animals and if you got to eat them you got the chicken to eat too so <laughs> hopefully it doesn't come down to that and we all go get back to normal here and oops, um hopefully we don't have to do that but um yeah but anywhere uh, any other resources you, you're welcome to check out hit me up at georgia bushcraft uh on instagram or facebook if you ever guys ever have any questions uh, I intend on doing in more in-depth videos on this, keeping chickens and turkeys, how they progress, but uh, goats. Um, we recently just got bees, so now we have two two hives, uh, and we're going to start growing those, hopefully, and making some honey and whatever other weird things we decide to. You've got too much free time on your hands. Okay, this has like been. Three companies, chickens, goats, bees. You know, I mean. We're gonna have a whatever you're smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, this has definitely been the best social distancing quarantine I've ever been part of. So, I, I'm loving this. We don't so have to be back when you're planning time. to make a chicken tractor. I don't know if I'll ever make a chicken tractor, only because we have a, a big enough space out here. Chicken tractors are great for people who want to like fertilize their yard and don't have a seriously large enclosure to put them all in um but it'd be it'd be good for like up in the field you know it, it'd keep them safe from uh from a lot of the hawks and predators that they're exposed to in a big wide open field That's they, when you do the chicken tractor model they mm -hmm. they just kind of roost in the tractor but otherwise they're just free range getting out and running around the fields Okay. Pretty, pretty much. So they, I think they mostly are contained within uh, the chicken tractor. Um, you probably oh, wow. could like raise up one uh, and let them let them run around there during the day and then come back at nighttime. But from what I've seen, they mostly live in there. And even if they don't have a roost, like you don't have to have a chicken box to lay chicken eggs in. Like when we would let them free range in our backyard, we'd find like Easter. You know. It'd be, there be eggs in different, like, comfy, sh you know, shadowy places, like under our deck or under a trampoline or under a table. Um, maybe something scared them and egg came out. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but you, you don't have to have all of this, but it just it makes it a lot easier. Um, and they definitely love to try to get in your house. So Pecky will, if we leave our back door open, she absolutely just walks in our house. So it's they're big, not afraid. The big so. cute. Yeah, let me inside. But they're they're nice animals. They're fun, and it's a good experiment to at least try. And you know, their 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 value goes up the older they get. To an extent, you know, once they become egg laying, you can sell them for a lot more than you could than the two dollars or four dollars, whatever you pay for an individual baby chick. Um, but they're they're cool animals. They're they're sweet. Come here, Peggy. Come here, Peggy. And I love Cheerios. Come here. Anyways, any other questions? Anybody have any other thoughts? Casey, I don't, you may have answered this, and if you did, just kind of skip over it. But uh, I'm wondering, in a concise way, what would be the minimum 
amount of resources one would need to have these backyard chickens in both money and then space and other resources? Like, tiny, uh, like, tiny, size tiny. Wise. what's that? Like, you, you could, you could really, I mean, our first setup was this little, little guy over here. It's, you know, six foot long by three feet, two and a half foot wide. Um, and that's good enough for four chickens. And I built a small, maybe four foot wide by eight foot long run. It, it doesn't, it wouldn't encompass more than a 20 by 20 spot at the, at the very max, assuming you, that was the extent of your backyard. Um, and that's giving them a lots of space. They, they recommend two to four square foot per chicken of, of kind of a roost resting area. Um, and then I think it was like five to 10 square feet per chicken for a run that's living the good life now granted you go up the road here to a chicken house with 60,000 chickens and they maybe have a square foot for all of that so um interesting fact there are uh um obviously more chickens than people on this planet but there's i think average of 25 billion chickens out there something like that uh in any given time but also there's more chickens than any other bird. So that's like the highly, most highly populated bird um, because obviously we consume a lot of chicken as, uh, as humans. Um, our neighbor has 60,000 chickens and he has a very, very small operation. <laughs> so I couldn't even imagine that many chickens in one, in one area, but that's what he, uh... What's Did that? You look into quail or duck or anything when you were looking for fowl. So we were gonna do duck. Um, they just didn't have any at Tractor Supply, and our local feed and seed store does not order ducks because they're really gross. Apparently, they're a lot more dirty than chickens. I guess it's maybe the addition to water, adding another water source, and I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why I've never kept them before, but our daughter and my wife wanted ducks so we'll probably end up with ducks uh i thought about quail too as well just because i believe their quail eggs are a lot more valuable than regular chicken eggs um they're a lot smaller so that may be a better option uh, i was i have it in the grid view on zoom here yeah uh, pecky. And I, that i see pecky's face it's like somebody else has a chicken no it's just my butt and pecky um but uh but yeah, quail may be a good option too for somebody who doesn't have a lot of space, but would also like to keep some sort of fowl or bird. Uh, I've had a quail egg. I believe their eggs are really delicious, um, but they're obviously a lot, a lot smaller. Um, but yeah, that, I, I, there's a few other fowl, different birds that I'd like to try. I'm excited about the turkeys though. I have no idea. I've heard turkeys are kind of difficult and because they're a lot bigger and maybe more aggressive. I don't know. I mean, why not? We named ours Thanksgiving Christmas. So if it doesn't work out, they're good to go. Thank you. So, All right. Well, we'll wrap it up there. I don't see any other uh, questions coming in yet, but uh, yeah, stay yeah. tuned. More classes coming down the pipeline.